I'm a huge Ravens fan. I know you've done top tens with me on the Giants before. Yes. I want to return the favor. Thank you. This makes me feel happy. Our top ten favorite Ravens from the 2000s. Mm. We can go in reverse order here. We'll start with our 10th favorite and then go up. Mm -hmm. um, as the guest, I'll start with you here with number 10. We can repeat answers. Uh, it's this one. We had a years of really bad receivers, and I have to give the man his flowers. Never a pro bowler with the team, but he's somehow the Ravens all time leading receiver. And that's Derek Mason. I just have a soft spot for Derek Mason. He's number 10 on my favorite Ravens of the 2000s. Just a, not the best Raven. Well, actually, he is the best Ravens receiver. So, but I have a soft spot for Derek Mason. He's number 10 on my list. I like it. Uh, spoiler alert. He's on my list as well. A little bit later. Hmm. Um, for me, funds number 10, you know, I'm a big tight end guy. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm going with this Todd heap. A little low for you, Tom. Yeah. A little low for me is right. Todd heap is number 10 on my list. Um, really likable guy. In my opinion, uh, played for the Ravens. It seemed like forever. Yeah. For uh, a long time. Two time pro bowler in his second and third year mm -hmm. in the NFL. Former first round pick, too, by the way. Yeah, first round pick for them. So that's my number 10. Who's your number nine? My number nine, people now remember because he played for the Patriots later on, but he was a Pro Bowler for the Ravens again with the Ravens with the linebacker picks. Adelius Thomas, a name now he'll probably remember, but he would. With Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, Peter Bolrare, Adelius Thomas was that four set of was in was just insane. Um, so Adelius Thomas is my number nine on here, and also just the name alone is great. Also known as T Sizzle, or no? Ah, shit. That's that's well, the other one. Well, they. I mean, listen, they both had the T in there too. Terrell Suggs. I mean, yeah, uh, Suggs is my number nine. By mm -hmm. by the way, mm -hmm. um, that works. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking a little bit ahead there. Um, but yeah, Terrell Suggs is mine. 139 career sacks. Most of them with the Ravens. Played from the Ravens from 2003 all the way up until 2019. Um, incredible career for Terrell Suggs. I'll never forget his 14 sack season in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that was... No, that was the year before you won the Super Bowl because we won it and then you won it. Mm -hmm. And yes, I believe yes, we yes. were both nine and seven when we won it. Yeah. Yeah. Or we might have been 10 and six, I think. We might have been 10 and six. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor led us to the front. We clinched the playoff spot and Tyrod Taylor played for Ted of Flacco and he led us to a win. So thank you, Tyrod. Number eight, Fonz. Number eight, a little different. I'm going to go. I know we played. Later on, he kind of he kind of went better in the more of the 2010s and whatnot. But Haloti Nada is on this list for me. First round pick in 2006. Um, didn't really kind of became a staple as one of the better defensive tackles until 2008, 2009, I'd say. But he was still a pro bowler, I think, in his second year. Uh, Haloti Nada though, was a very good run star for us. Again, that defense was just stacked with players. People forget about Nada. I think a lot of people do. Ravens fans don't. But I think outside of the Ravens fandom, People forget about him, but Haloti Nada is my number eight on my favorite Ravens. I like it. I remember Haloti Nada specifically through Madden. Um, mm -hmm. Great player to use. Uh, my number eight is Bart Scott. Um, I'll never forget his year in 2006 when he mm -hmm. had nine and a half sacks, two interceptions, nine passes defended, mm -hmm. playing next to Ray Lewis. He was a fun player to watch. Um, very familiar with the New York market now. Ended his career with the Jets. Little, little fun fact there about Bart Scott. And of course, Wait. yeah, <laughs> um, Bart Scott went undrafted. Yeah, in two thousand two. Fun and, fact. And uh, how about that? Another Ravens gem found it. <laughs> yeah, they somehow do it every single time. Bart Scott didn't make my list, and I will give him Ooh. credit for what he's done. He would have, but he also he didn't have that. He had a long run, but he, again, you know, a lot of other line. It's hard. Again, that's another name because I didn't even mention him before. Look how many damn linebackers they have. Uh, my, what are we on number seven now? Jamal Lewis. Jamal Lewis. You guys know how I am in my two thousand. Yes. Next. 
rookie of the year, offensive player of the year, one of the few 2,000 yard rushers. I wish he played a lot longer for us. Was on the roster his rookie rookie year. He started as running back for the Super Bowl team in 2000. Jamal Lewis. Bruiser, one of my favorite 2000 running backs, probably up to number three uh, behind Steven Jackson and Michael the Burner Turner. Again, that's just, just no bias here. Those are my top three favorite running backs from that era. Um, I like that pick a lot. I remember Jamal Lewis's play in the Super Bowl 35 against the Giants. They Was it 30? Yeah, it was 35. Mm-hmm. They, I think they ruled it a touchdown. It was the play where Mike Barrow and Sean Williams were trying to push him out at the one yard line. The play itself was revealed about 35 different times. And then they finally gave Jamal Lewis the touchdown. Um, Jamal Lewis did not make my list, but Jim Leonard did. And he was only a Raven for one year. Interesting. But Hmm. I liked him. and I liked what he did as a jet primarily, but I did like him as a Raven as well. Um, One of my good buddies, Die Hart Ravens fan, big Jim Leonard fan. So I kind of followed in his footsteps there with that one. Um, also, pretty decent punt returner. Pretty decent punt returner. Okay. So that's, that's my good. number that's seven. Don't, don't, don't hate that one. I don't. I actually am a big fan of that one. Uh, my number six, you mentioned him, Todd Heap. Love, love me some Todd Heap, but none of the more underrated tight ends of the 2000s. Just a good security blanket for Kyle Bowler, who was god awful. Kyle Bowler is not on my list, by the way. I, I, if we had a competent quarterback, I think the Ravens would have won like two Super Bowls, at least three in that 2000s era. I'm just saying. Uh, but we were just horrible. But he was a good security blanket, good tight end for us. I wish he got a ring for us because he got drafted the year after they won the Super Bowl and he retired just a few years before they won in 2012. So I wish he got one during that time period. But, you know, because he left for the Cardinals, but still a big fan of Todd Heap. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, Todd Heap, I probably should have had him a little higher thinking back on it, but really solid player. For me, my number six is Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. Uh, a lot hmm. of people forget he was Baltimore Raven because of what yeah, he did that, with Dallas. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I didn't factor in that. I factored in how they were as a Raven. You know what I mean? That's what I. Yeah, did. that's true. Yeah. But he wasn't terrible on the Ravens, though, too. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't. He wasn't bad. No, he's pretty good. Uh, but uh, let's see what we got. Number five now, right? This is number five. Yes. Yep. Uh, number five. This is just NFL Street 2 in a nutshell. This is how I became a Ravens fan, by the way. That I, I didn't know anything about football. If you guys don't know, I got NFL Street 2 or I think Street 1, one of them. And I needed a team and I saw the Ravens colors and I'm like, ooh, this is nice. But that defense was incredible. So these next five are just a staple of NFL Street for me. Number five, Chris McAllister. The cornerback for them. Chris McAllister was such a fun quarterback to use in that game. He was a really good player for us when the era where we did not have a good secondary outside of another name we'll mention and McAllister, where we always needed that second corner opposite of McAllister. We went through Samari Roll, Dwayne Starks, Fabian Washington. McAllister was always a consistent corner for us on the one side, so I got to give him his flowers, number five for me. I like it. Uh, you might see him again in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, number five, Fons, I, I, I don't anticipate you having this guy, but I also love Hog Molly's offensive lineman, Mike Flynn, who transitioned to be the starting center um, after Jeff Mitchell left following the uh, Super Bowl run. Started at right guard in that game against the Giants, and the reason why I have him on my list, Fons, he dominated. Cornelius Griffin in that game. Oh, my God. Pancake after pancake. <laughs> it was not a good game for us. And, Fonz, I'll be honest with you, that's the reason why he's on my list. Um, again, I did not consistently watch games back then. It wasn't until 2002. But, um, yeah, I, I just I remember watching that because my grandmother recorded all the Super Bowls back then. And then that game, it was just the Ravens offensive line dominated our defensive front. The Ravens dominated us all around, really. But I had to throw in an offensive lineman in there, and that's the one I threw in, number five. Yeah, not a bad one. I would, I'm would. i also going to throw an offensive lineman in a little bit, but my number four, we already mentioned him, Sizzle, T-Sizzle. Talk about Ray Lewis as the best linebacker in Ravens history, but Suggs ha- I, is number two for me for the linebacker spot. 
easily these next four, by the way, Tom, is my Mount Rushmore Baltimore Ravens. And Suggs is that conversation for that fourth spot. So Suggs, big fan of him. Even once Ray left, he was still part of the team. He was still consistent for us. And when he left, I was sad. He went to the Cardinals. Then he went to the Chiefs. And I didn't hate it. I wanted him to actually win that Super Bowl. I wanted the Chiefs to win because I wanted Suggs to get at least one more ring. And he did, again, not you know, not like a whole star for the Chiefs, but he was a good rotational guy for them too. So I, again, I rooted for him. I always loved Sizzle's personality, you know, ball so hard university just made like the defense fun. Like actually like was like had a personality in the era where sometimes you didn't get a lot of personality with defensive players too. So Sizzle's my number four. Number four. Interesting. My number four. So I actually just lied to you funds. I had Jonathan Ogden as my number four as well. I love Ogden. Uh, for a second, I thought he was, I always knew he was a tackle, but for a second I had him in as an edge rusher. I don't know why I wrote that. He would be a trip. scary edge rusher too. Yeah, by the way. he would be scary. But what I wrote for Ogden is that he had 176 career games started, um, 11 time Pro Bowler, 14 first time All Pro. He was Baltimore's first ever draft mm-hmm. pick as a franchise back in 19, I believe it was what 96. So 96, I believe, yes. The best thing you could have as a franchise is a cornerstone left tackle outside of a franchise quarterback. And Jonathan Ogden was part of the reason why Trent Dilfer became a serviceable quarterback for the Ravens in the early 2000s. And why Trent Dilfer has a ring to this day. Jonathan Ogden protecting his blind side is my number four. Love Ogden. I wish he played for us a little bit longer, a little bit of a shorter career than most. You say 96. Well, it's still a long career, but 96 to 2007. You would think they would, because he was still a serviceable tackle, even in 2007 was a pro bowl that year. So I thought he would have at least a couple more years. I'm glad he won that ring in 2000. I wish he was uh, somehow on that roster with that current Ravens, with the Ravens team in 2012. Imagine him on the Ravens now with Lamar Jackson and then Ronnie. Like, Ogden was one of the best tackles we've seen. That was such a they nailed it. With that as your first pick, by the way, that's just a Ozzy Newsom did it again. He somehow did it again. Yeah, six nine. By the way, one of the tallest players in NFL history. Wow, did not know that he was that tall. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, so he tied with fellow he's Raven great. Jared. G- so with him, fellow Raven Jared Gaither, they were teammates, by the way, and Bengals tackled Dennis Rowland as the tallest players in the NFL. That's 6'9". Look at that. And at, and Gaither and Ogden were both the tackles for one year, by the way. Ogden was left, Gaither was the right tackle, and that is a ridiculous 6'9 <laughs> tackles, by the way. Wow. Look at that. Number three, Fonz. Me or you? Oh, sorry. You. Uh, my actually no, because my number three actually oh, was your number Ogden. three was Ogden. Was Ogden. Okay. It, oh, also, my bad. I will say this with though, because Michael Strahan said this at the Super Bowl too, like that he was just it was just intimidating Ogden because he was always smiling the entire game. Like he just was so, <laughs> like he, like Strahan literally said, like, I don't under, I don't understand it. He's just he's like laughing. Like you yeah. see, you, this guy's not mean enough to handle mean guys in the NFL, but he would literally rip your your limbs off playing and smile at you after that's yeah <laughs> like, like, Jonathan Ogden, so good on michael strahan <laughs> great match negative game great matchup it's a great yeah. matchup <laughs> yep um he was awesome would have loved to see him in giants blue <laughs> but he was well a now. he would do well now in giants blue <laughs> 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 Yeah, my number three, Chris McAllister. Mm. Five picks as a rookie in 1999 with 23, 21 passes defended. Uh, This guy also had a career year in 2006. He had six picks and two touchdowns. Really good in coverage. Impressed man. I mean, Fonz, you you know best, but he was phenomenal for Baltimore. Uh, he finished his career final year with the New Orleans Saints in 2009. He played in just two games. I think he got a Super Bowl that year. He was in that um, Super Bowl team, his yes. final year. So, oh, shout- with the yes, with the Saints also, right? McAllister. Yeah, I love McAllister. Yes. I think we go yep. back to him. Um, we go back to McAllister. I don't think he gets talked about as one of the better corners during that time period. 
And he was a very mm-hmm. good corner that now he will talk about. So uh, thank you for putting McAllister higher, by the way. I yeah. thank you for that. What are we on now? My number two? Correct? Dos. Dos. Yep. Tom, do we know do we know who's one and two is gonna be for me? Am I gonna change it? Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Ed Reed's my number two. I mean, that guy, him and Ray Lewis got me into the Ravens because of their stats in NFL Street were absolutely ridiculous. Ray Lewis more because of the number 52. I just like that number. But Ed Reed was just a ball hawk in safety. They're like Peyton Manning said this, by the way, in an interview. He was watching Ed Reed's eyes, and Ed Reed actually tricked him to throwing the ball in a certain direction. And when Peyton Manning threw it there, Ed Reed just darted to the other side of the field and grabbed the ball from him. So, like, when he, like, like Peyton Manning tried to plan to beat Ed Reed, Ed Reed planned to trick Peyton Manning into throwing into another direction to go for it. Like, that's how crazy he was. Like, he was ridiculous. Yeah, he was an awesome ball hawking safety. Um, mm-hmm. Him and Troy Palomalu were always in a competition. Who's the best safety in the league? Is it me? Is it you? Uh, it was Ed Reed. But can you yeah. imagine both on the same team, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be phenomenal. Uh, also, seven career touchdowns for Ed Reed. Yeah. That's yeah. that's more than some receivers. I, so. <laughs> I He also has – I don't, I looked at double check. He has the most uh, career re- interception return yards with 1,590. That Again, is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is. Longest re- interception return, by the way. I remember Kevin Cobb passed it to him at the end of the back of the end zone, 108 yards returning. That's a name, by the way, <laughs> Kevin Cobb. Kevin Cobb. Uh, Again, <laughs> fun. More yards than some receivers. <laughs> yeah, he had more. He had more yards so, than Andrew Hawkins. By the way, shout out to him. Callback from earlier in the show. Yeah. Um, what a great player. I mean, he, man, he he was awesome to watch. Edward Earl Reed Jr. By the way, mm-hmm. um, my number two is Derek Mason. Uh, reason why? I just liked him. You yeah. know, always a likable guy. May have not been the best player, but he was very, very good. I mean, he was the receiver number one for Tennessee for quite some time. Yeah. And he came and played with Baltimore, and he still had four 1,000-yard seasons there. Yeah. So what's there to not like about Derek Mason? Again, the all-time leading receiver in Ravens history. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right, Fonz, we know who your number one is, but – Let's hear it and why. Bruh, Mr. Ray Lewis, the man that got me into the Ravens. Shout out to NFL Street again and got me just into watching football overall. Uh, the resume speaks for itself. Multi-time Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl champion, defensive player of the year, Super Bowl MVP, which you rarely see for a defensive guy. Um, can't remember that ended his last season, tore his bicep, came back in the playoffs and just had just an incredible postseason run that year. I just one of my favorite players ever. My favorite, my favorite Raven. Just I just love watching him. Leader on and off the field. Just a just a great player for the Ravens. Still love today. Like I've not heard any Ravens fan hate the guy. Like this guy was just loved throughout his entire career. And an era where you see players bouncing around for different teams, including Mr. Ed Reed going to the Texans and Jets his last year. Lewis stayed loyal to the Ravens. This actually was their second pick that year. It was Ogden. At four, and then Lewis in the twenties. By the way, so they made a good first impression with that draft. Yeah, um, Ray Lewis is a good pick. I I didn't have him on my list just because he he wasn't in my favorite ten. If it was top ten Ravens players of all time, he would be number one. But yeah, I get that. Favorite I get that. That makes for sense. me, number one, Ed Reed. Um, mm-hmm. Again, if you have a safety that can patrol the field like that, it's yeah. just absolutely incredible what he was able to do throughout his career. You mentioned more touchdowns than some receivers, more interception return yards than some receivers had in their entire career for receiving yards. So again, a guy who could really make a difference in a ball game. He's my number one, another Madden freak, by the way, back in the day. So good. So good. I do have three honorable mentions though. You'll find this interesting. I want to hear him. Ray Lewis was number 11. Obviously. Yes. Number 12 was Tony Siragusa. Ah, the goose. Yeah, he was an honorable mention, too. Just I there. wanted to put him on there. Mm-hmm. And uh, this this third one, you may or may not like, Tom Zibikowski, Notre Dame. I'm not shocked you put him on there. I wanted him to be really good. I really wanted him to be good for us. 
Yeah. Like I wanted him to be good and he just didn't like he just didn't like it just didn't work. I don't know. He was a good special teamer, but like that's it. You know? So I got a I mean it's it a couple him. I'm thinking of now. Him and Nakamura, right? Two safeties yeah. who were just special yeah. teams guys. Yeah, I was gonna try to re- not replace everybody, but start alongside Ed Reed. There's a lot of other honorable men I can throw out there um, that you mentioned: Sam Adams, defensive tackle; Michael McCarry, was, defensive yeah. end; uh, Goose, obviously; Marshall Yonda. But I would say more in the 2010s, I'd put him in if that was kind of because he was drafted in 07. But you know, yeah. I'd still put him in that conversation. He almost made it, but I wanted to make sure I put Nada there over that because I just didn't want to be too much. Uh, Yaman figures just on the name alone. Uh, Matt Stover, the kicker. Sam Cook, going to get the punch of the people too. There's definitely more. Dewan Landry, I wish he was better. He was good for a little bit. Tom Nagers came me down to the rabbit hole past Raven. Peter Bulwer, I didn't even mention him. Jamie Sharper, I don't know, Tom, we've had a bunch of damn linebackers that I forgot, by the way, too. We've had so many freaking linebackers. I don't know how we do it. Yeah, a lot of them, Tom. Yeah. Too many. You guys have an outstanding franchise. You know, you won two championships since 1996. Um, The only reason why. That's good for Mm -hmm. an expansion team, by the way. Like, we got to give credit to that. And they travel very well, the Ravens fan base. They travel very, very well. Um, They are a great franchise, and they'll win more championships moving forward. A a lot of people have them as a dark horse Super Bowl team this year. So don't blame them. Can I put can I put Ozzie Newsom as my favorite Raven in the 2000s? Just simply what he was been building throughout his time, even though he didn't play. Absolutely. I'm like, yeah. Ozzie Newsom, an honorable mention, by the way. 